we are a volatile strategy. Right. Over. Well, volatility on the upside is not a bad thing. Spectacular growth rates that no one is expecting. Uh, there's a lot of money to be made. We have our own philosophy. Five-year investment time horizon. Truth will win out. This is a bargain. Wow, it has been quite an exciting month. Now that this channel has all grown up, I think it's time we sat down and had the talk. I just want you to be safe out there, you know? Uh, I'm talking about risk and volatility. What did you think I was talking about? The markets this year have been very choppy and ARK Invest portfolios are filled with some of the most volatile stocks. Our strategy, just to give you a sense how volatile it is, our strategy from mid-February through mid-May, most people wouldn't admit this maybe, but uh, was down 37%, peak to trough. Yikes. So I wanna talk about both sides of volatility since I think it's core to ARK Invest's style of investing. First, I'll share a few ways that you can manage your risk on the downside without compromising your own investment goals. After that, I'll share ARK Invest's biggest position increases in October since many of them have exploded to the upside. Your time is valuable, so timestamps are enabled for your convenience. Let's get right into it, starting with volatility versus risk. Tesla stock is the only stock that ARK Invest has over $3 billion in across all of their actively managed funds combined. This year alone, Tesla has had multiple drops of over 10% in a single week. Tesla is also up over 40% in the last month on the news of Hertz ordering 100,000 vehicles from them. Even though that's incredibly volatile, nobody is complaining about it simply because that number is green. As investors, shouldn't we all be complaining about this? I definitely want to hold more Tesla stock, and it just got way more expensive to buy. The only other stock that ARK Invest has over $2 billion in is Teladoc, ticker symbol TDOC, and its share price has fallen off of two separate cliffs and it spent the entire summer in a landslide. Everyone is complaining about this stock because it's been grossly underperforming the market and has been dragging down every ARK Invest fund that it's in, which is most of them. I think this is a great company and it's basically been on sale all year. As investors, shouldn't we be loving that? I'm not a financial advisor and none of this is financial advice, but in my opinion, buying an asset low and selling it high is a good way to make money. I'm not being sarcastic here, my point is very simple. The stock price going down is just as important to making money as the stock price going up. So if you find yourself worrying about both sides of volatility, here are some ideas to help you turn this lose-lose into a win-win. First off, there's nothing wrong with defining your personal boundaries as an investor and sticking to them. If roller coasters aren't for you, don't get on the ride. People don't say that enough. However, you should know that unlike a roller coaster, you don't have to put all of your money in very volatile stocks if you don't want to. And if you do want to, you can still choose to average that money in over time instead of getting on the ride all at once. Even though it's not always easy, Averaging in prevents you from buying at the top and is actually the simplest form of good risk management. Diversifying your holdings is another form of good risk management. Here's an example of a great little micro portfolio of just four holdings, Tesla, Palantir, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, and SPY, which tracks the S&P 500. In just three individual positions, you've got exposure to the bleeding edge of artificial intelligence, energy storage, robotics, enterprise software in a wide variety of growing markets, and a cryptocurrency that more and more institutions are starting to put on their balance sheets. Then you can use the S&P 500 as a hedge and lower the volatility of this little portfolio, all while still getting very reasonable returns. The less confident you are in picking your own stocks, the more you can consider putting into SPY until you clarify your position on the individual companies that you chose. It's not all or nothing, and people don't say that enough. I get it. We all have lives filled with more important things to do than tracking the stock market and reading investor presentations all day. <laughs> yeah, totally. That's where funds and money managers come in. You can have a certified professional control some or all of your money through different types of accounts and investment vehicles that use a wide variety of strategies. Don't let any knucklehead on YouTube tell you that there's something wrong with your retirement fund from Vanguard or Fidelity. Not even me. For me personally though, I want an investor that aligns with my vision of the future and the technologies that I think are making the world a better place. 
I want a fund manager who can forecast these technologies reasonably well into the future and buy them at the right price today. Kind of like a value investor would, but with a framework that works better for the young, small cap, volatile types of stocks that I like to hold. Here's a clip from a recent Bloomberg interview with one such fund manager talking about volatility. I actually enjoy pushback because, again, it tells me we're not in a bubble. Right. And, you know, as a portfolio manager, I much prefer to be climbing a wall of worry. Those are the strongest markets. And here we are. We are a volatile strategy. Right. Okay. Well, volatility on the upside is not a bad thing. Right. And last year was a, a good example of that. Um, uh, but the Off other the thing, charts. But the right. other thing yeah. we, we, we said at the time, and, and we actually took our cues from a value investor who said to us, I would never buy one stock in your portfolio, but I like your research and you might be right. So I'm going to just put 5%. This is a value investor, 5% as a hedge. Uh, and kind of thought we were behaving like a value manager, long-term time horizon and looking for extreme values. Well, value investors are using price to book and, and dividend yield and that sort of thing. We're using growth. You know, we're using spectacular growth rates that no one is expecting. And Tesla was our first uh, proof of concept, I would say, a very right. visible one. Uh, there's a lot of money to be made. We have our own philosophy. Five-year investment time horizon, truth will win out. This is a bargain. This, you know, I believe, I'm, uh, our compliance department say, I believe that, uh, that innovation <laughs> stocks are on sale. So all that has happened in the last uh, few months is the price has come down. That means the law, if we're right on our forecast that our rates of return have gone up. So now I can take something like 5 or 10% of my money and put it in, say, ARK-K, which is Kathy Wood's flagship innovation fund. By doing that, I've diversified the investing behavior that influences my results altogether, since now a separate person manages some of my money. I also end up gaining exposure to some new areas of technology, like genomics and streaming and entertainment, all in just five tickers and all without compromising on my personal investment philosophy. I know what I hold, and if I don't, I at least can understand why my fund manager holds it at a high level. Why is that important? Because that's exactly how you get the conviction to hold these things as they drop 10, 20, 30% or more in the first place, let alone buy more on the way down. There's actually one more way to protect yourself from volatility without compromising on your investment ideas, and that's to invest in assets that aren't correlated to the stock market. I already mentioned one example, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, which tracks the price of Bitcoin. Another example would be real estate, which is how investors like Graham Stephan, Meet Kevin, and even Stephen Mark Ryan got their start. They can go for more volatile kinds of growth stocks because they've spread their overall financial risk across different types of asset classes like real estate and crypto. As a fan of all three of those channels, I don't think they point this out enough. Well, not everyone can afford a mortgage and not everyone is comfortable holding crypto. So how can we invest in assets that aren't correlated to the stock market? I actually spent a lot of time digging into this and the partner for today's video is a great way to do just that. Masterworks.io is the only platform that lets you invest in multi-million dollar paintings without breaking the bank. I like Masterworks because according to a recent report by Citibank, art had the lowest correlation to the stock market of any major asset class. If an asset class is uncorrelated with another asset class, that simply means that they behave differently. Before I found Masterworks.io, I thought investing in art was only a hobby for the super wealthy, but I was wrong. Contemporary art pieces have almost tripled the S&P 500's total return from 1995 to 2020, according to another study by Citibank. That's why billionaire art collectors end up allocating between 10 and 30% of their overall portfolios to art. That's way more than you thought, right? On top of that, the $1.7 trillion held in art today is expected to grow by another 53% in the next five years, according to the accounting firm Deloitte. Masterworks is the largest buyer in the art market today, and it's looking to spend another $400 million on fine art in the next year alone. Then their platform allows you to invest in those paintings just like you would buy shares in a public company. That means that Masterworks.io is disrupting one of the most exclusive asset classes in history by giving everyone frictionless access to fine art. 
not just the ultra wealthy. And that is really important to me. Here's how you can invest. Let's say you think this painting by Banksy is going to appreciate nicely. You would simply go to masterworks.io, select the number of shares you want, and then buy them. Now that you're invested in the painting, you can either wait for it to be sold, or if you want access to your money sooner, you can sell your shares through their secondary market to somebody else. In 2020, investors saw a 32% net return on their sale of Banksy's Mona Lisa. That's two times better than the S&P 500. I think the reason that Masterworks has such a long waitlist is because they're making something that used to be impossible so easy. So I reached out to them to give you all VIP access to their latest offerings if that's how you want to diversify your portfolio. I'll leave a link to that offer for you in the description below. Hopefully I've given you some useful ways on how to manage your investment risk without compromising your investment goals or the kinds of stocks that you like the most. The reason I wanted to share that with you is because a lot of ARK Invest's biggest increases over this past month have already exploded in price, so they now have a much bigger downside. Let me walk you through them. Here's a table of all 156 positions that Kathy Wood currently has when you combine her six actively managed funds. Each row is one stock, the rows are sorted by Kathy Wood's total position size in that stock, and they're colored by the percent change in that position size relative to the change in ARK Invest's assets under management. At the start of October, her funds had just under $38 billion in them total, and they now have just over $41 billion in them, which is a 9% increase in AUM. The more green the row, the more that position increased over the last month relative to that 9% number. The bigger the total position size, the lower the rank. Rank 1 is always Tesla. So when you see the clickbait headlines about Kathy Wood selling hundreds of millions of dollars worth of Tesla, you can check this table and see that it's still ARK Invest's biggest position by far, and the only reason she sold 16% of her shares is because they jumped nearly 40% in price. Likewise, Kathy Wood can increase the weight of her positions in two ways. She can buy more shares of the stock, which is the first column, or she can hold the stock as it continues to jump in price, which is the second column. So if we look at the second column, we can see that many of the positions on this list increased by double digit percentages over the last month, including Tesla. Teladoc, Coinbase, and Unity Software all saw huge jumps in share price over the last month. This is huge volatility in ARK Invest's top positions, but this time it's to the upside. If you're taking screenshots, do so now, because I'm about to sort the table by the biggest changes in position size instead. Since this episode has been all about volatility and managing risk, let me keep pulling on that thread. Kathy would increase the size of her cash position by over 50%, which is one of the biggest monthly increases in her cash that I've seen since I've started tracking the data. It's never a bad idea to make sure that you have some cash sitting on the sidelines ready for that next deal. One such deal happened when Scorpion Capital released a short report on Ginkgo Bioworks at the start of the month, dropping the stock's price by over 20%. If you look at our trading, and we do publish our trades at the end of every day, we are not a momentum player. Uh, if you, uh, we were, I was just talking about uh, Ginkgo over there, and this is public. Um, you know, it got slammed two weeks ago by Scorpion, a new short, and, and so Ginkgo got smacked, was down 50% over a few days over the short report. We were buying the heck out of it, and then today it's up, I don't know if it ended up 15 or 20%. So we are not a momentum chaser, we are a liquidity Ooh. provider. When you know what you hold and you have the cash to spend, red days become your favorite days. To help you know what you hold, I've made deep dives on many of ARK Invest's highest ranking positions, including Ginkgo Bioworks, Bitcoin, Teladoc, Coinbase, and Skills, which I've put in one convenient playlist for you. I'll leave a link to that in the top right hand corner of your screen right now and in the description below as well. Now that the metaverse is a hot topic, I want to take another serious look at companies like Facebook, now Meta, and Snapchat as well. That's how the data drives the research that I share on this channel. I'm interested in a lot of these stocks, but they've just jumped in price, so I'm adding them to my watch list instead. I'm hesitant to highlight any of them, so I'll report back if I find something worth talking about after I do more research. Since this channel has now hit 100,000 subscribers, they grow up so fast. I'm going to put all of this advice into practice in my $100,000 portfolio, which I'll premiere in the next episode. The goal of that portfolio is to show you how the research and investing habits that I talk about on this channel 
all work together. If you want to be updated as soon as I make an investment decision, instead of waiting for me to make a video about it, consider joining my highest tier patrons on Patreon or channel members right here on YouTube, who already have access to that watchlist and what's in my portfolio so far. My next episode will be about this portfolio, so I would wait until you watch that before deciding one way or the other. To make sure you see that episode as soon as it comes out, consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel with all notifications turned on. That's also a great way to invest in the channel that invests in you. And comment below or tweet me at ticker symbol U with your thoughts on volatility and risk. Are those the same things to you? Do you like it when stocks go in one direction but not the other? Do you often think about your overall portfolio, including assets outside of the stock market? Do you do a good job managing your cash position and your watch list? I read all of my comments and tweets, and I'm excited to hear your thoughts. Either way, I hope this episode gave you some fresh ideas, or at least some good reminders. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.